In a previous video, I showed how to set up a different method to handle post versus get methods in Spring Boot, and I showed how to download and install Postman to test this out. In this video, we're going to go a bit more advanced. We're going to see how to create a different method to handle uh, a couple of different operations. One is the header that comes across in an HTTP request. The other is any type of name value pairs that come across in an HTTP request. Anytime we go into a browser and hit a URL or anytime we access just about anything on the internet, there's a bit of header information that goes under the covers that you never see that tells us a little bit about our request. So here in Postman, uh, we would take a look at a request that I started earlier. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to Git. Uh, take a look down here. This is probably one of the most valuable parts of Postman to me as a developer and that is authorization, and then we have headers, and then we have body, and then we have several other things that we can configure. These are things that we couldn't necessarily configure in a browser. So one of the headers that we'll often come across is content type, which describes the type of data that we're submitting to some kind of web server. So I'm going to say content, and notice that it auto-completes here with a list of all the possible headers that we might want to use. I'll say content type, and then I'm going to say text uh, JSON, just like so. Okay, and at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and hit send, and we should see no difference to what we've already seen before, which is this is going to get consumed by the get method of our controller. I can go ahead and choose F8 to tell it to proceed. So let me now duplicate this method. And I'm going to say, okay, we'll say read JSON. In this case, we're saying, let's handle it if the header, we'll say headers, plural, headers, and then curly, and then double quote, we have the name, which is content-type, oops, sorry, and then an equal sign, and then text slash JSON. So let's see if that matches up to what I put in the postman. So content type and then text and then the slash on the question mark key and an American keyboard. Uh, and then we have uh, text JSON. Looks like I'm missing a closed curly on that. And we'll just tidy things up for neatness here just a bit. And then of course, snap a breakpoint. And then I will stop, I'll stop and restart the video. Or I will stop and restart the service rather. And we'll confirm that this works. With the service restarted, now I'm going to resend my request with content type text JSON. Our success criteria is that the breakpoint on line 23 should hit because that's the one where we have the headers with content type text JSON. So let's go ahead and hit send. We see a clip light up orange and sure enough line 23 has been hit. This is the one that has content type text JSON. So I go ahead and choose F8, tell it to continue, and then we get an affirmative response back in Postman when we click on body. Okay, so let me unchoose content type now and send again, and let's see what happens this time. So I hit send, Eclipse lights up orange, and take a look at which one hit this time. Not line 23 like last time, but line number 18, which does not have a header qualifier set. So that ends up being kind of the default capture. So if there's nothing else, you know, if, if there's no other qualifying request mapping annotation, this one ends up becoming the default because it does not have the header set. And in this case, we haven't specified a header of text JSON. So we just get the default header. Just one moment. We'll go ahead and choose F8 there. We get the default header, which is text H. Well, actually that's on our response, text HTML. But nonetheless, we get a default header, which is not text JSON. Okay, let's try one more thing now. We might occasionally see name value parameters in a URL. So for example, if I go to the live plant places, and I know I've shown this one a couple times before, but nonetheless, uh, plantplaces.com. And we'll run over to the search screen. We'll see that anything in here that I type, like genus, circus, species, canadensis, when I submit this form, it becomes name value pair that we see up in the URL. So genus sursus, species canadensis. Now let's consider a, a some kind of policy where maybe we have different loyalty levels. So we might say loyalty equals blue. And maybe we want to treat loyalty blue levels, uh, give them different benefits than we would for silver, gold, platinum, something like that. 
So we want a different method to handle blue, silver, platinum, so on and so forth. So let's run back to Eclipse again. And what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate this method and we're gonna add one more qualifier. And this qualifier, note that the method name's the same, so we'll need to tweak that. This qualifier is going to, to be params equals. So we say params equals, and very similar to our headers equals, we need to enclose this in an open and close curly. So we say params equals, and then we're going to say loyalty equals blue. And better put that in quotes, actually. Let's go ahead and put that in quotes. And we will call this method read blue. And just to test things out, let's go ahead and do this one more time. Uh, but let's make one for silver loyalty levels. So we go ahead and boom. It, if you can kind of visualize what's, what's happening here, it's interesting. Because we are doing a conditional, which we often know as an if test. But instead of putting an if test in code, we're using an annotation to do it. That's much better because if tests, uh, if tests contribute to something called cyclomatic complexity, which is nesting and, and kind of how long it takes for your brain to understand source code. So simple is always better. And also if tests are notoriously harder to unit test, they kind of uh, increase that complexity. So let's call this one loyalty equals silver. Again, we'll see the uh, notation I've done here, put it in quotes. I hit save, it'll tell me, ah, I need to terminate what we're doing because you've added some methods and I can't hot swap them. No problem, so I right click, I go back, I right click, and I choose debug as one more time and Java application. Well, that's starting up, we'll take a look at what we've just done. And our goal here is if I say loyalty equals blue, line number 28 is gonna catch. On the other hand, if I say loyalty equals silver, it will be line number 37. If I don't specify loyalty at all, it will just go to line number 18. So let's try it out. Now we have loyalty equals blue. I'm going to not worry about the uh, content type. I'll go ahead and hit send. And we see, sure enough, Eclipse lights up in orange. And which breakpoint hit? Line 28 hit. Let's go to the right and we see loyalty equals blue. Just as we expected, I'll go ahead and choose F8 to tell that to continue. Just as we expected, loyalty equals blue triggered the method read blue, which we've mapped to the parameter loyalty equals blue. Okay, so let's see if our silver discriminator works. So loyalty equals silver, and then I'm going to hit send. Eclipse lights up orange, which of course is a good sign, and take a look at which breakpoint hit. The breakpoint hit with loyalty equals silver, and it says return starts. We choose F8, we let that continue. Now, what if I said, what if I took off loyalty entirely and I hit send? Breakpoint hits again, and guess what? We're just kind of back to this default method. So we go ahead and choose F8. This is the very first one we started with. We're only saying it should be get, and we're not specifying parameters. Okay, so let's try a few more experiments. What if I say loyalty equals blue? We'll go with that one. Uh, but I also choose post. Now, why am I trying this one? Because I've set params loyalty equals blue on a get method. I have not specified anyone, anything for my post mapping method. So let's see which one it comes to. Does it come to our post method or does it come to the one with the uh, uh, params loyalty equals blue? And I hit send. Eclipse lights up orange, which is a good sign. And in this case, the post method is more important than the parameter mapping that we have. So if you have kind of a conflict there where you have one map to post, but you don't have the parameter map, the HTTP method of post will win over that params discriminator up here. So we go ahead and choose F8. Let's try one more, which is going to be interesting. What if we leave loyalty in, we switch back to get, and we go with headers as well. So we don't, in other words, we don't have any method that's annotated to be get with a param loyalty equals sim, uh, silver and with the header content type equals text JSON. Just for SMGs, let's try this out. So I go to get, I click on my content type again to enable that text JSON, uh, just like we set up before. And I hit send, Eclipse lights up orange and which one won here? In this case, uh, loyalty equals blue one. 
and that beat out our header of content type text JSON. Just to make sure I have that content type set up correctly, let me go ahead and um, go back to, I'll take off the loyalty equals blue part and I'll leave the text JSON, hit send and back. And we see sure enough, without the params, it drops down and it uses the header as the qualifier. Okay, F8. Now you might say, ah, oh, sounds great, but is that because the order in which these methods appear? So in other words, did it fall to loyalty equals blue because it saw that first on line 26 before it saw the headers equals content type text JSON on line number 40? Let's find out. So I right click and I cut this method and I'm simply going to move it above the params loyalty equals blue method. Make sure I have everything nice and tidy here. Uh, a little tidying up. There we go. Save and then terminate and restart. And now once again, we're sending both parameters and a header. And we have one method that's set up to handle the parameter, one method to set up the header, but no method that's set up to handle both. The only thing we've changed is the order of those methods in our controller. So I go ahead and hit send and which one wins? Eclipse lights up orange. I did, by the way, pause the video to restart here. In this case, loyalty equals blue still wins even with the headers content type text json even with that higher so the order that we're finding here the order of precedence the most important thing it's going to look at well first of all naturally is going to be the uh, endpoint address that we have here which is slash start after that it's going to look at the method and it's going to narrow down the available request mapping annotations based on the request method that was specified here we've said get, uh, this is a post mapping, which is essentially just a request mapping where the request method is set to get. Those things are one and the same. After that, it's going to consider the parameters. So we keep narrowing down the methods that are qualified to handle this response. So after considering the method, we look at the parameter values. After the, considering the parameter values, we consider the headers. So that's the order of importance, endpoint, method, params and headers. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to hearing about your experiences with this in the comments. Thank you very much.